With a rousing rendition of You'll Never Walk Alone, a large lot of Liverpool supporters settle into their seats at the G-Sport pub in downtown Vancouver. With Liverpool flags, jerseys and scarves draping from the walls, this cosy pub is a home away from home. Clasping their mugs, they anxiously await this week's kickoff, which is now only moments away. And as they fixate their eyes upon that 50-inch gateway to England, it's not exactly the smell of burgers and fries that wafts from the kitchen. No, these soccer, or rather football fans, are ordering eggs and bacon, because today's game starts at 7 a.m., and it would be almost blasphemous not to watch the game live. So they gather in this downtown Vancouver sanctuary every Saturday morning to worship their idols. Steve Speed is three years removed from his homeland, but he says Liverpool football is more than just a sport. People say it's just a game when I get really upset over it, but it's just something that's deep inside you and it affects you really. Like, I guess it's no different for anyone who's obsessed with any team. It's like the team affects your emotions and the team loses, you just feel like crap. And if they win, you feel like you feel unbelievably good. That's it, go on it. It's it. Shite. Shite, Alonso. Rooting for Liverpool is an emotional roller coaster, but there's simply nothing you can do about it. You don't have a choice. It's like a religion. You don't. You just can't stop yourself. It's, you just there's nothing you can do about it. Once you become a Liverpool fan, that's it. That's it. You're there for life. There's nothing you can do. Bandwagon jumpers need not apply because this religion is developed at a very early age. Growing up in a city that endorses two rival top-tier football clubs leaves no room for fence-sitters. When I was a kid in the 80s, Everton were really successful. My mum's family are all Everton. So I would have both of them to try and to take me to games every week, but I just had to go with Liverpool. Across the table from Steve is Keith Perkins, one of the senior Liverpool fans. Like Steve, he was baptised at an early age. And draped in the team's red garb, he too will never walk alone. Well, they say, like, right till dead. That, that's the only way it is. I mean, a, a, a team anthem is you'll never walk alone. And, uh, you know, there have been times when we sung that, that song in, in times of extreme joy and extreme sorrow. And that's something that once you realize that you're a part of this club, then you do, you never walk alone. The song we sing before every game, it's also a song we sing at the end of every game. We also sing it on certain special occasions. Uh, I've had the misfortune of singing it at some funerals you know, for uh, fellow supporters. The highs are high and the lows sometimes far too low. It can really affect you for days afterwards, so I'm not kidding. If it's a bad result, you just feel depressed for, you know, it could be up to a week or up to the next big win. And when it's a really big win, I mean, it's the best feeling you've ever had. When that ball hits the net, it's better than sex. While Keith can often be found at the pub with his wife by his side, both clad in Liverpool shirts, not everyone has converted. Steve's Canadian wife, Tracy, isn't even on the fence. I think he goes even above and beyond what most people consider passionate. I think it gets into obsessive sometimes. Yeah, like when he's like spreading out all the articles on the middle of our living room floor and waving his flag and singing You'll Never Walk Alone when he's all by himself. Um, I kind of have an issue with that. But yeah, I think it goes beyond passion. It's obsession now. And Steve's passion or obsession is not just a pastime, it's a livelihood. I can't think of anybody else I know who has let it take over so many facets of their life. Like people at his work know him as the guy who wears the Liverpool shirts. People in his office building who don't know him, it's taken for quite a bit of his, his life. It's, it's beyond passion. But while Tracy says Steve's following is beyond passion, Steve says he's just one of the many fans who wears his emotions on his sleeve.
Liverpool won a major trophy three, two years ago and it was it was a very big deal we won the Champions League and I cried and she still tells people I wouldn't say now whilst I cried you ask anyone in this room what they what they did after Liverpool won in Istanbul and they'll tell you there were tears in the eyes while winning the Champions League in 2005 was a high for many that hasn't worn off yet for Liverpool fans every game is a big deal. For us, every week it's like the playoffs for you guys. That's how big it is. Like I've noticed in hockey during regular season, all people will get into it, but when the playoffs, you take it to another level. The, the vast majority of us are like lifetime supporters. We'll never change. And even when we're not doing so well, we're still supporters. I see, I'm disappointed with a lot of Canucks fans that if they're not doing so well, they, they stop watching, they stop listening to their games, and then all of a sudden they start hiding all their Canucks sweaters away. And it, it, you know, we, we wear our, our shirts with pride, and you know, we'll always be there to support the team no matter what. Once you become a supporter and you meet other supporters, you know, it's like almost an instant friendship. Wherever you go in the world, if you find another Liverpool supporter, you're automatically friends. And as the game ends on this day, and supporters prepare to leave with a smile that will last a week, friends support friends and stand with arms raised high, knowing that they will never walk alone. For Evolution 107.9, I'm Mark Jansen.